Hey everybody, it's Basil from Inventory Planner and I'm here to talk a bit today about our new updates to the Open to Buy planning section in Inventory Planner. Open to Buy is a cash flow planning tool. It's a place to plan your purchasing budget for the upcoming months while keeping in mind your planned revenue goals and your optimal stock cover going into the upcoming months to make sure that we're well supported. Uh, Open to Buy is particularly useful for merchants planning for a highly seasonal business. If we need to ramp up our stock going into a specific season, is a great way to get ahead of that and see what that's going to look like. It's also useful for companies with a lot of new products coming in, especially if we have good category history, a lot of items within those categories with similar patterns. This allows us to plan revenue and stock goals, as you can see, by category or at a total level. Uh, what this will do is essentially look at our stock, anything that's coming from purchase orders or received goods that exist in the system already, and figure out with all of our goals, what else is left to buy, what is open to buy. So let's dig right in, all right? So first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and create a new plan. Now we're in the open to buy area, and you can see on the left-hand navigation bar. I'm just gonna name my plan, let's call this one IP Demo, all right? So we can see here, right, right now we're looking at one specific warehouse. This is my Shopify warehouse. So we can have different plans, of course. And I'm gonna use a top-down planning method. This allows me to put in my planned revenue here at a total level. And what it's gonna to try to do is set these same goals for every category below it. We'll see exactly what that looks like. Now I could also do this at a bottom-up planning level where we actually put in our planned revenue and stock cover goals by category. And if we wanna reduce the categories that we're seeing, if we have some unnecessary categories, select actions, category organizer. So we don't need that sale category. Let's get that right out of there. All right, so that's how we can clean that up a little bit, make sure that we're planning revenue on what's relevant. But you know, I actually like to plan at a top level and it's gonna give us an interesting feature that I wanna be able to show you as well. So I'm gonna move back to top down planning. And what we're gonna, try to do here now is we're going to set, first of all, the planned revenue goals for the upcoming months. So if I select actions, we can seed that information in based on the prior year. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to see from the prior year, I'm going to say this year, we're going to have a 10% increase versus last year. So we can apply that in here. We've seeded in that revenue automatically. Now, if I were to click this gear icon over here on the top right, I could actually add in some metrics from last year, like actual revenue. And this would actually show me, you can see in October, for example, here's our last year's revenue number, plus 10% is what we get for this year. We could also go back even further. Last last year, this would be two years ago. So a lot of metrics we can use to compare in here, or we can reset just to go back to our default anytime. Now, once we have those planned revenue goals, we could adjust them, of course, anytime, or we could even borrow them from our sales forecast. For that, you want to dig deeper into our replenishment and forecasting capabilities. There's a ton to go off of there, but you can always check that edit forecast tab, break it down by category to see how your forecasts break out and seed with that information in mind. And I could, I could adjust these numbers. Maybe we're actually going to sell 250,000 in November, we're going to have a big holiday season, 300,000 in December. So now what I need to do is tell the system, what is the forward cover? Is, is essentially how do I want to be positioned going into this month? So for October, for example, if I were to set this to three months, so what this will try to do for every single category, it's gonna to try to set three, which means we wanna close the prior month with three months worth of planned revenue. So we're actually gonna look at October revenue, November and December. We're gonna look at the planned revenue across the board to try to make sure we can end the month of September with that in mind, keeping in mind what's in stock, any existing purchase orders or goods we've received. Now keep in mind everything you're looking at here is in retail dollars. This is an apples to apples comparison. So we use all of that to say what else should you buy, which is the open to buy at retail value, to make sure that we can end the month with three months worth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and save that in. Now we're gonna get a prompt that shows up here and it's telling us you know, we can't set, we're trying to set three for every single category, but currently accessories as a category is overstocked. So we're not gonna recommend any purchases in that category. But for the rest of them, we're gonna set them to three and provide open to buy. And when we go and we 
recalculate from the category all the way back up, it's going to recalculate our stock cover is 3.037, and that's what we're seeing here. Now, if we were to look at that by category, for example, how does that look like when you see ladies here? So we can see for ladies, it worked. What we did is we're recommending $337 to purchase. It would make sure that with everything else in mind from how we're opening the stock that month, everything that we're selling, and if we buy this big, big buy, it's going to ensure that we end the month with $345,932, which is the sum of these three values. Make sure that we enter the month of October with that amount. So it tries to do that, repeat that behavior with every single category. However, it did notice that there was at least one category that was actually overstocked. We saw that it was accessories, which makes a lot of sense. We entered the month of October with more than enough already. So we didn't recommend anything to buy in the month of September. That's why I said we were overstocked and it recalculated back at this higher level. So that's how this function is gonna work. It provides those open to buy values. Then the next thing that we need to do is to convert that to cost. To do that, we can simply input a margin. So say it's 65%, I'm just typing 65. I could tab over to these others as well for as many months as I need to. I'm gonna go ahead and save those changes in and that's gonna give us an open to buy at cost. Um, now we can go even further with that. I've already clicked this, this gear icon up here, bring in the average selling price. And if we can input that, we can also calculate open to buy at units. So say our average selling price, maybe $25. Of course, just putting in some simple numbers here. We're gonna, again, every time we do this, we're gonna set it for every category as well. Now that just converts open to buy at units. So lots of good information we could add in here. We could also add in markdowns. That would be a really key one to consider. Markdowns would be that difference between our retail value. If we sold everything at retail price versus what we're actually selling it for, we wanna make up that difference with markdown. So basically, you know, as we can see here, the month of November, everything that we're able to buy, well, if we took 5,000 in markdowns and we save that in, it's just gonna increase our open to buy for that month as well. That's a lot of different rows in here. Let's, I'm gonna reset that, bring that back over here. So now it gives us some open to buy numbers that are really useful. We can see what that looks like by category. All this information in mind, now I can take this back to replenishment so say I want to go, you know, look at ladies specifically. I know that in the month of September that I still need to buy 118,000, right? So I could always go back to replenishment at that point. I'll just open a new tab here, you know, and what we could do, we could come over to the replenishment screen here, could break it down by category. We could see what's going on with that ladies category, what's in stock, what's in order, our current replenishment recommendations click into the variance so the individual SKUs and you know we got to buy up pretty deep we're trying to get in through the end of the year right now our days of stock window we're just really planning for october so let's say all right and take all these items and adjust the lead time the days of stock to the end of the year 91 that would that would make sure that we cover our planning period between october and december so it gives us some new recommendations going to be right up there. So all right, that's our replenishment cost. It's quite a bit lower. We need, we can grab these items, grab a purchase order, and then we could scale it a bit. We had plenty of room for purchasing. So we could say, all right, you know, basically here's our amount. I could hit actions, scale my budget, scale it up a bit. I'm going to just buy 10,000 for now based on what's going on in here. All right. So we can use that information however we'd like and create purchase orders. And as we do that, that information will be reflected back in open to buy. We'll see what the purchase orders are or what's been received. We'll convert those to retail dollars and they'll be represented in here. And naturally your open to buy amount will slowly chip down. It'll come back down a bit based on what you've come in to buy as well. Open to buy is best used as a cash flow planning mechanism to get a sense of what our purchasing budget should be then we can pop into replenishment and the forecasting parts of the tool to really action those items and do a bottom up purchasing type of strategy and just see how does it start to reduce that open to buy and which category should we be focusing our budget in. If you ever try to remember any of this information, I know it's a lot to take in at once, you know, is pop open that support widget at the bottom right and just search for that open to buy article. It'll walk back through this information in pretty great detail. 
everything that we talked about today, or you can just watch this video over and over again. Uh, but enjoy the Open to Buy tool. Let us know if you have questions. We'd love to hear your feedback. We'll continue working on improvements as we go, but enjoy your planning, all right? Thank you, take care, bye-bye.